At 5.10pm local time on the 29th of November 2020, the lights went out for the Bahrain Grand Prix. With the title wrapped up by Lewis Hamilton at the previous round in Turkey, three races remained which would end a wild, COVID-impacted 2020 Formula 1 season. 2020 was a season like no other. The return of some classic circuits gave the season a sense of spontaneity and nostalgia. On the straight, just on the exit of Turn 3, Haas driver Romain Grosjean clipped the front of Danny Kvyat's Alpha Tauri, sending him towards the barrier at approximately 192 kilometers an hour. Grosjean was seen hitting the barrier in the corner of the broadcast shot, which was followed by large flames bursting out from the crash area. The horror of seeing a Formula One car burst into flames hadn't been seen for many years, and was an outcome which didn't enter the realm of possibility of what fans knew as modern Formula One. The race was instantly red flagged, and while drivers slowed down, many asked their engineers what happened and if Roman was okay. For many drivers, seeing what happened right in front of them and for others ahead in their mirrors was instantly the most shocking moment of the 2020 season. Fans at home waited for an update and the pit lane filled with drivers and personnel who stood in shock as the events unfolded. Soon, the shock turned into cheers and applause as Roman Grosjean emerged from the flames and was helped over the fence and taken directly to the medical car by Alan Vandermeer and Ian Roberts. The instant Instant sense of relief was a welcome feeling, and though the race would later be restarted, the events that took place lingered for the rest of the Grand Prix. Romain Grosjean was okay, but suffered burns on his hands, which he carries the scars of to this day. Michael's condition has been carefully supervised throughout the night and the condition remained stable all of the night and the condition remained stable also in this morning. That is for the moment a good news but I repeat it is just for the moment because Michael's injury is, is heavy and the overall situation is critical. When you win seven world championships, 91 races, and millions of hearts, you know you've done something right. Michael Schumacher was a larger-than-life guy. His talent was clear from a young age, winning Formula One World Championships with two different teams and creating arguably the most important and famous legacy of all time with Scuderia Ferrari. Michael was an icon of the sport. After a final stint with Mercedes from 2010 to 2012, Michael was set for retirement and set his sights on devoting majority of his time to family activities. Michael was a fairly private person, but there was no doubt we'd likely see him in the garage of Ferrari or Mercedes at future Grand Prix weekends. On the 29th of December 2013, Michael Schumacher was skiing with his son Mick in the French Alps. While skiing off-piste, Michael would fall and hit his head on a rock. Despite wearing a helmet, Michael suffered a severe head injury and was airlifted to hospital. He underwent surgery and was put into an induced coma. Michael would slowly improve and was eventually withdrawn from the coma and since then his condition remained quite private and speculative at most. With only the reliable updates being directly from his manager or family. Privacy was no stranger. Michael always lived a private life, and when the Schumacher documentary was released on Netflix, we got a small insight into his family life and a tiny glimpse into how life is now, with his wife saying that Michael is different still here but different. Since the accident, Michael has not been seen in public since. Michael meant a great deal to many of his fans, with some respecting his family's decision to keep his condition private and others feel, as his fans, need some sort of an update on Michael's current condition. The situation has created somewhat of a divide. The day Michael Schumacher had his skiing accident was a day that shook Formula One. A man who drove at such high speeds and risked his life every time he got in the car, Retired from the sport relatively unscathed, many saw Michael as a superhuman and indestructible, and his accident that day on the French Alps reminded us how fragile we as humans really are. È piena di tristi ricordi. My life is full of sad memories. Vivo nel passato. I look back and I see my loved ones. And among my loved ones, I see the face of this great man. 
It's been said that Gilles Villeneuve was one of Enzo Ferrari's favourite ever drivers. Enzo was a unique man, a guy that was willing to do whatever it takes for his company, and a somewhat serious person. So you know that Gilles Villeneuve was doing something right to gain the respect of Enzo Ferrari. Gilles Villeneuve joined Ferrari for the final two races of the 1977 season, but was signed on for the 1978 season. Gilles had a slow start with Ferrari, but it soon improved. In 1977, he would partner Jody Schechter and missed out on winning the championship by just four points. 1980 and 1981 would be disappointing seasons for Ferrari, but with two wins in 1981, Gilles still showcased what he was capable of doing during his time in Formula 1, and was touted by many as a future world champion. On the 8th of May 1982, during qualifying at the Belgian Grand Prix at Zolder, Gilles Villeneuve was approaching Jochen Maas, who moved to the right in order to give Gilles the racing line. At the same time, Gilles had moved right to pass Jochen Maas, subsequently hitting the back of his car, and what followed was a horrific accident. The accident saw Gilles Ferrari launched into the air at approximately 225 kilometers an hour, and was airborne for roughly 100 meters, before returning to the ground and flipping multiple times. Gilles was thrown a further 50 meters, hitting a catch fence. Doctors rushed to Gilles, who still had a pulse, and was rushed to hospital. Gilles Villeneuve Villeneuve passed away at 9.12pm on the 8th of May 1982. Gilles' death shocked the F1 world and was a heartbreaking day for his family, friends and those who idolised him, such as Jeremy Clarkson, who is a self-admitted fanboy, describing Gilles Villeneuve as his hero. Many describe Enzo Ferrari as having an almost fatherly relationship with Gilles, and on his passing, Enzo said the following, His passing has deprived us of a great champion whom I loved very much. My past is marked by grief, parents, brother, son, my life is full of sad memories. I look back and see the faces of my loved ones, and among them, I see him. Despite Gilles having a relatively short career, he has gone down as one of F1's greatest drivers, with some of his on-track battles being some of the most famous in the sport's history, and his raw speed being totally undeniable. Thank you for watching this video. For more content just like this, you can check out my channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram for some behind the scenes content and future video sneak peeks. And if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button. We're not far away from 100,000 subscribers and I can't wait to get there. As always, I truly appreciate your support and I will see you in the next one.